Leah is described in the Hebrew Bible as the daughter of Laban. She and her younger sister Rachel became the two concurrent wives of Hebrew patriarch Jacob. She had six sons, whose descendants became some of the twelve tribes of Israel. She also had a daughter, Dinah. Topic: Personal history. Topic: Appearance. The Torah introduces Leah by describing her with the phrase, "Leah had tender eyes." Hebrew: Wini Lach Ark Genesis chapter 29 verse 17. It is argued as to whether the adjective "tender" ark should be taken to mean delicate and soft or weary. The commentary of Rashi cites a rabbinic interpretation of how Leah's eyes became weak. According to this story, Leah was destined to marry Jacob's older twin brother, Esau. In the rabbinic mind, the two brothers are polar opposites, Jacob being a God-fearing scholar and Esau being a hunter who also indulges in idolatry and adultery. But people were saying, Laban has two daughters and his sister, Rebekah, has two sons. The older daughter Leah will marry the older son Esau, and the younger daughter Rachel will marry the younger son Jacob. Hearing this, Leah spent most of her time weeping and praying to God to change her destined mate. Thus the Torah describes her eyes as soft from weeping. God hearkens to Leah's tears and prayers and allows her to marry Jacob even before Rachel does. Topic. Marriage to Jacob Leah becomes Jacob's wife through a deception on the part of her father, Laban. In the biblical account, Jacob is dispatched to the hometown of Laban, the brother of his mother Rebekah, to avoid being killed by his brother Esau, and to find a wife. Out by the well, he encounters Laban's younger daughter Rachel tending her father's sheep, and decides to marry her. Laban is willing to give Rachel's hand to Jacob as long as he works seven years for her. On the wedding night, however, Laban switches Leah for Rachel. Later Laban claims that it is uncustomary to give the younger daughter away in marriage before the older one Genesis chapter 29 verses 16 to 30. Laban offers to give Rachel to Jacob in marriage in return for another seven years of work Genesis chapter 29 verse 27. Jacob accepts the offer and marries Rachel after the week-long celebration of his marriage to Leah. Topic: <inaudible> Motherhood. <inaudible> Leah is the mother of 6 of Jacob's sons, including his first four, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, and later two more, Issachar and Zebulun, and a daughter, Dinah. According to the scriptures, God saw that Leah was unloved and opened her womb as consolation. Seeing that she is unable to conceive, Rachel offers her handmaid Bilhah to Jacob, and names and raises the two sons Dan and Naphtali that Bilhah bears. Leah responds by offering her handmaid Zilpah to Jacob, and names and raises the two sons Gad and Asher that Zilpah bears. According to some commentaries, Bilhah and Zilpah are actually half-sisters of Leah and Rachel. One day, Leah's firstborn son Reuben returns from the field with mandrakes for his mother. Leah has not conceived for a while, and this plant, whose roots resemble the human body, is thought to be an aid to fertility. Frustrated that she is not able to conceive at all, Rachel offers to trade her night with their husband in return for the mandrakes. Leah agrees, and that night she sleeps with Jacob and conceives Issachar. Afterwards she gives birth to Zebulun and to a daughter, Dinah. After that, God remembers Rachel and gives her two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. Topic. Rivalry with Rachel On a homiletical level, the classic Shasidic texts explain the sisters' rivalry as more than marital jealousy. Each woman desired to grow spiritually in her avodat Hashem service of God, and therefore sought closeness to the Zadok Jacob who is God's personal emissary in this world. By marrying Jacob and bearing his sons, who would be raised in the Zadok's home and continue his mission into the next generation indeed, all twelve sons became Zadokim in their own right and formed the foundation of the nation of Israel, they would develop an even closer relationship to God. 
Therefore, Leah and Rachel each wanted to have as many of those sons as possible, going so far as to offer their handmaids as proxies to Jacob so they could have a share in the upbringing of their handmaid's sons. Two, each woman also continually questioned whether she was doing enough in her personal efforts toward increased spirituality, and would use the other's example to spur herself on. Rachel envied Leah's tearful prayers, by which she merited to marry the Zadok and bear six of his twelve sons. The Talmud Megala 13b says that Rachel revealed to Leah the secret signs which she and Jacob had devised to identify the veiled bride, because they both suspected Laban would pull such a trick. <laughs> Death and burial Leah died some time before Jacob according to Genesis chapter 49 verse 31. She is thought to be buried in the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron alongside Jacob. This cave also houses the graves of Abraham and Sarah, and Isaac and Rebekah. <laughs> Family tree According to this tree, Leah's husband Jacob is her first cousin through their mutual grandfather Bethuel. They are also second cousins once removed Jacob's great-grandfather through Abraham, Terah, is Leah's great-great-grandfather through Nahor, and again second cousins once removed Jacob's great-grandfather through Sarah, Terah, is Leah's great-great-grandfather through Nahor. Finally, they are second cousins twice removed Jacob's great-grandfather through Abraham, Terah, is Leah's great-great-great-grandfather through Milcah, and again second cousins twice removed Jacob's great-grandfather through Sarah, Terah, is Leah's great-great-great-grandfather through Milcah. <laughs> Medieval Christian symbolism In medieval Christian symbolism, Rachel was taken as a symbol of the contemplative monastic Christian life, and Leah as a symbol of the active non-monastic life. Dante Alighieri's Purgatorio includes a dream of Rachel and Leah, which inspired illustrations by Dante Gabriel Rossetti and others. In my dream, I seem to see a woman, both young and fair, along a plain she gathered flowers, and even as she sang, she said, Whoever asks my name, know that I'm Leah, and I apply my lovely hands to fashion a garland of the flowers I have gathered. <laughs> Notes